In this video, I'll be showing you how I made this fun nature scene. It will have many tutorial elements within it, but it's not a follow along tutorial. So it's aimed very much at intermediates who have a good understanding of the basics of Blender. This video is made possible by the sponsors of this channel, Nvidia and PC Specialist. As you probably know by now, Blender's performance is greatly increased by Nvidia RTX cards with their AI tensor cores and optics integration. And this scene is absolutely massively dense with scanned assets and particle systems, volumetrics. It really is pushing it to the max. If you're a serious Blender creator, there's no other choice. PC Specialist are an NVIDIA Studio partner and leading system builders, selling a range of customizable PCs that perform amazingly with Blender. They specialize in custom PCs and laptops for creators and gamers. So configure your next NVIDIA RTX system using PC Specialist online configurator today. So let's take you through how I made this scene. So the very first thing I did was to block out a scene. And this is the only time lapse of the video. It's all very simple modeling techniques, but I really wanted to see whether the lighting was going to work as that was crucial to the whole scene. So I created one cylinder, copied it lots of times, kind of varied it a little bit, then put a big light in the background and tested the strength of that. Once I was happy with the light, then I inserted the fog to make sure my fog effect was going to work as well. It's not that simple to get those sort of streaks of light. You need a very powerful light and the density of your fog needs to be quite low. And of course, testing this here is much easier than when you've got scanned assets in and particle systems and things like that that are going to slow things down. Also experimented a bit with the color of the light as well to make sure I could get that effect that I wanted. And of course, the colors of the trees, make sure that they responded to the light in the way I was hoping. I'll quickly show you how I make the fog. Shift A to add, mesh and then cube. Scale it right up so it encompasses the scene. So my box is completely covering my scene here. It obviously makes it a bit awkward to see when we're in solid mode. So it's a good idea to go across to your object properties, scroll down to viewport display and where it says display as textured, change that to wire. And then you've got your wired box there. I'll go across to the shading tab now and create a new material for this. And I'll zoom out a bit. You need to swap the principal BSDF, so I'll delete that, shift A to add, and put in a shader, principled volume shader, and then plug that into the volume. Then when I go into EV, you can see my fog. The density is always way too high, so change it to something like 0.1, and we're starting to see the objects within it. I'll need to go across the render view to see my lights, and you can see the lights shining through my trees just there. I had to up the anisotropy quite high to get the directional beams basically, which you can kind of see here, although it's much clearer when I've got more trees in my scene. But hopefully you get the idea from that. So once I've done the blocking out stage and I know the light's going to work, I can start to bring in my scanned assets. So I've got some trees here and I've obviously positioned them so some of them lean in. That helps with the composition slightly. You can see these ones lean this way and these ones lean this way and that brings us into the center. Obviously I've got the shining light in the background. I'll turn that off for a second so you can see all the scanned assets. We've also got these branches, rocks, which make up an important aspect of the scene. Most of these things are from Sketchfab and I just typed in tree then scan and had a search through. It's not actually as easy as it might seem and combining different assets can be awkward because of the different lighting. I wanted to keep it fairly simple and I found these trees in the park models from 3D HD scan, and these are free to download and use in your projects. I found some forest branches from Archify and the stone. I tried a couple of stones and it was tricky to get the right color green, and I settled on this one in the end from Pears Scan Collection. Because I was making my own forest floor, I could get rid of this particular forest floor. It reduced the poly count and stopped it kind of bursting through the rest of the scene. They were all linked duplicates as well, so I could change one and update it and it would change on all of them. That's using Alt D instead of Shift D, of course. And using linked assets like that should reduce your render times. For the logs, however, I couldn't reduce them in that way, so I chose a decimate modifier. So across the modifier panel, up to the decimate, and I chose a ratio of 0.2, and then just checked whether that looked like it made too much difference. So just turning it on and off in the viewport like this. It looked like 0.2 would work, so I applied that, and now it's a reduced poly count item. And here you can see me doing the same process with one of the other logs. The impact of the decimate was more 
so I had to go a little higher with my ratio so I didn't lose too much detail. Now, because this was a linked duplicate, I couldn't apply it until I had made it a single user and then I selected the other ones and relinked them up. That way they took on the new poly count. In terms of using the scanned assets, you can probably tell if you look really closely that the objects at the back are still very basic. So right through here, right at the back, they're all really basic objects. So they're just cylinders. And at the front, that's where I've used and utilized the scanned assets. You can't really see the loss of detail in those assets at the back. So we don't need the complexity of these scanned models and therefore we can save on the poly count. I'll just highlight those at the back. You can see there's lots of them in there. They're splitting up the light so we get those light rays and making it look like a dense wood. Now, like I say, I've been using scanned assets, but if you want to learn how to make a full modular environment, such that you can see here, where you make assets that you can repeat over and over, then do check out my environment course. You can get it for only $20 with the coupon in the description. So the next thing is the particle systems, and they're a key part to make this whole scene work. So with my floor selected, you can see all the different particle systems that I've got, and I'll add a new one in so you can see the process. This is under the particle properties and you can create a new one up here. So I'll come down to the bottom and I'll create yet a new one. And to stop this running slowly, I'll just hide the previous ones. At the moment, it's an emitter. So let's change this across to hair and you'll see all the hair strands standing up in the viewport. You can change the number here. The hair is obviously far too long. So I just usually put that to one meter. We can change the scale a little bit later on as well, but I find one meter a good starting point. Now we want to insert something to change these hair particles too. So I'll just come across the side here where my 3D cursor is, Shift A to add, image, images, planes. This is an add-on that comes with Blender, but it's not enabled. So you need to enable that under edit, preferences, add-ons, type in image, and you've got the image as planes add-on there. Make sure that's ticked. Then when you press Shift A to add, image, you'll get in the image option, images as planes. And here's some plant textures with transparent backgrounds that you can download from textures.com. You must make sure it's got an alpha channel in the background, so something like a PNG. I'll show you the process of me making these bluebell ones in a moment. But first, let's choose one of these. I'll choose this one here and then import images planes. Now I'll just zoom in on that a bit and you can see the object origin is right in the center. It's easy to change. Just go into edit mode, G to grab in the Z axis. I've actually got proportional edit on. That's why I've got that circle but bring that up so that the origin point is just here. So that will be the bottom when they appear on our floor. Okay, so we've got our plant here. Let's click back onto our floor and I'll just zoom out to touch and come across. So with the floor selected under render, we've got path at the moment. We need to change that to object. Then we can scroll down and under object, there's an option to pick an object here with the eyedropper. I'll use that, pick this, and there's all our particles. That looks a little bit weird. That's because under render, we've got this scale. So if I change that to one, you can see them all appear there. Now there's one more thing we need to change. We need to rotate these around. And for that, it's a bit strange, but you need to click on the advanced settings here. That's the only way you can get hold of the rotation. Then you can tick the rotation. And if we change this to normals, that's the normals of our ground object, which are pointing upwards. So it will rotate around that axis. And we've got a bit of rotation going on there. That's quite nice. You might think the randomize is a good idea. So if I change this to 0.2, unfortunately that rotates it away from the normals. A little bit of rotation on that is actually okay. So maybe 0.05, so it goes up at a little bit of an angle, actually maybe 0.1, therefore it's got a little bit of an angle. But instead the randomize here, so if I change this to 0.3, that's changing it around the Z axis and that's the one we want. The other thing to do, if we go down a little bit, we've got the scale here which is set to one. I might make this one a little bit smaller actually, so 0.8. And you can also change the scale randomness. So if I change this to 0.4, we've got lots of randomness in our plants now. And let's scroll back to the top and you can see if I slowly reveal these, all the different particle systems I've got in my scene, which is looking quite nice. I think the last one I've just added though, I need to adapt slightly. I'll only have a few of these. So I'll come down to about 400 and I'll scale them down a bit more to about 0.5. So just offering a little bit of variation. Now, one last thing on the bluebells, I wanted lots of bluebells, but the number says 950. Well, there's actually loads more than that because there's an option down here. If I keep scrolling down under children, if you turn this on to interpolated, you can change the display amount and the render amount. And for each particle or 950 of them, it's displaying 10 more 
in the viewport, but in the render, it's going to render 30 more. That's why we've got so many bluebells in the scene. So in order to create my own images of bluebells with a transparent background, I went to my local park and found some bluebells, put a red piece of paper, well, it was actually plastic in the background, which didn't help much and made it a little bit more tricky. That's so I could cut out the background and then place them into Blender. So you can see me in Photoshop cutting them out and then I use a color select to select the color, remove the color, keep the background as a transparent layer and save it as a Photoshop file. Blender can read Photoshop files, so it was nice and easy. Here's the image I ended up with, and you can see a little bit of the red bleeding through. Ideally, when you take a photo like this, you don't place it so close to the red because the red can kind of reflect onto your objects or whatever color background it is. Often they use a green screen or a blue screen, but obviously there's blue and green in a bluebell. So I chose red as my color. It might have been better as an orange, to be fair. So in Blender, I brought them in in the same way I just showed you, and I've got two images so that there's a bit of variation and they're both in one collection because you can choose a collection as well as an object when creating your particle systems. Now for the particle system, which is over here, if I bring that back to the start, you can see all these particles coming out of it. And those particles are linked to these objects here. And they've got a very basic material. It's just a gradient to make it look a bit like Blossom and add some variation. I've actually got a slight emission shader on this because it wasn't bright enough in the render. I'll quickly go to the shading tab and show you that. So you can see my color ramp there with a gradient texture. Let's zoom in on those, go to material preview. Very basic, but there is an emission color here and a slight emission strength of 0.5. These are very dull and gray in the scene without that. I'll show you quickly how I set those up. You create a collection of these. So these are all in the same collection called petals. And I've created a new collection here just called particles. And I'll change the color of these slightly and maybe bring down the emission strength to something like 0.1, just so there's a bit of variation. So back to my scene here, you set up a big plane as your emitter object. And then with that plane, you go across to the particle settings again. And there's my first one. I can add a new one here. And this time we'll keep it on emitter. I'll give a nice lot of particles for this one, 1,500. What you must remember with particle systems, if you want to see them, you've always got to bring your timeline back to frame zero and then start scrolling across so you can see what's happening to your particles. And if I change this frame start to something like minus 1,000, that ensures that when I go to the beginning, which suddenly isn't working. Oh, and it needed a second to update there. But you can see going back to the beginning, all the particles have already started. So they're already in the scene. But for my second emitter, they're just falling downwards like this. And if I zoom out, they're only going this far. That's the lifetime. And we can turn that up to something like a thousand. And again, go back to the beginning, perhaps give it a second to update. And there they are. Now we want them floating this way. Well, I came down to the field weights and turned off the gravity. Let's go back and see what that does. Give it just a moment and it's going straight across like this, which is great. Now I need to give it some sort of movement and that is under physics. If we turn up the Brownian to something like 0.2, again, back to the start, it's not showing much, but you can see it's spreading out a little bit more now. Let's turn it up to one. And now they're spreading out all over the place. That's a bit more like it. At the moment, these are just round balls. If you look at them, that's because we need to go to the render tab here. I'll close down the physics and the field weights onto the render. And again, like the hair, we changed this from halo to collection and chose our collection, which is small particles. Now these ones are very small and that's probably what I want. So I'm going to do a test render. Make sure when you're doing a test render that you hide your other particle systems because that will just slow down renders. So that's how I set up the particle systems. The last thing I was considering was the type of render to use. Was I going to go with Cycles or with Eevee? Well, at the moment, you're seeing this in Eevee and it's giving a great result. My settings are pretty insane in terms of the volumetrics. I've got it set to two pixels for the tile size. The samples I've put up to 256, but it's doing a surprisingly good job, I would say. However, with these settings, it took 25 seconds per frame and that's in Eevee. And that was mainly down to the particle systems in the scene. I haven't yet found a good way to integrate particle systems without costing a huge amount in render times. If anybody else out there does environmental renders or nature renders like this and use lots of particle systems and manage to get good render times, then please let me know what your advice is. Of course, then there's cycles. If I jump across the cycles, you can see that it gives a much softer look and you can see my samples slowly going up here and the denoise doing an amazing job of sorting out all the noise. If I turn the denoise off, you can see what it's having to deal with. 
and that's why it needs a lot of samples before it can get to anything that's fairly decent. It really does highlight how important that denoise option is. When we didn't have that, these scenes would take absolutely ages before you could make any sense of them and therefore make any changes that you felt you needed. And of course, a big thank you to NVIDIA. With their RT cores and AI tensor cores, it means I can play with the textures and lights without having to wait ages to get any feedback. Because without that, it would have been very hard to do this project. So there it is, the final scene. All in all, it took about two days to complete this project. I certainly learned a lot doing it. And I think what I'm going to do next is have a go in Unreal Engine and see the capabilities of that. As usual, please comment below with any thoughts and advice you might have. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.